available to everyone, or is there the possibility of someone being excluded? So we're going to look at some verses, and you may probably know the answer to that already, but uh, for the internet purposes, we're going to go to uh, 1 Timothy 2.1. 1 Timothy 2.1. I'll try to remember. I'm on a tablet, so I'll go a little bit slower for those that are in a book. Um, I have my Bible, but if I was to open it up, pages would start flying everywhere because it's separated from the binding. 1 Timothy 2, 1, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, it's a tough word for me, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we, we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all goodliness and honesty. For this is a good and acceptable, and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of truth. For there is one God, one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. And then one quick little verse, we'll go to Titus. Titus 2, 11. Titus 2, 11 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. So pretty clear that everyone is included and that really no one is excluded, right? I think that's pretty clear. So with that foundation laid, um, well, first of all, let's, let's pray real quick before I get started. Um, Father, we thank, you for, we thank you for your word. We thank you uh, for its clarity and its understanding in our life, and we hope to imply, uh, apply that to our life. In Jesus Christ, amen. So with that foundation lay, laid, uh, is there an unsaved sinner out there that can justify to God why they should be saved? apart from his opportunity. So let's look at a few verses there. We're going to go to Romans. We'll spend most of our time in Romans 1. So hang on to that always. Romans 1, 16. Romans 1, 16. Says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified, not, they glorified him not as God, and neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts, their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like un, made like to un, made like to corruptible man, and to the birds and four footed four footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. So the answer is no. We all knew that um, they, because they're without excuse, as the verse had stated. And, and God gave them up to, to their sin, to live in that sin. That was their choice. Um, we're going to, he also lists a long list of sins, and we're going, to, we're going to go through those really quick. Drop down to 29. So it says, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, 
backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable and unmerciful. And I don't know, do you guys know what without natural affection is? I have had no idea what that was. So I don't know, maybe I'm wrong on this. I looked it up as best I could. Um, and I got that to be that it means losing your instinctive love for your own parents or children. Does that sound right? I had no idea what that was. So that was interesting. And there's some other ones of these here I might not quite know, but that one what stuck out the most. Um, and just for, for, you know, like we all have our specific, our, we have a, things that we deal with uh, now that we're all saved, we're crucified with Christ. So it's not us that sin, it's our, it's our flesh. But something that we deal with, like for example, my wife, because she's not here, so I can use her as an example. Her sin is, falls under the category of deceitfulness because she manipulates me all day long to get what she wants, right? Anybody got those? Yeah. And I'm sure, and you know, it's like I'm a guy, so I can, that's right, so be quiet. <laughs> They don't know what you're, I don't know what I'm talking about. But let's, let's not forget that, uh, you know, you can have, sin can be, for the unsafe person, it can be human good as well, right? Your religious activity, stuff like that. So let's keep in mind that, you know, here's a list of some pretty awful stuff. Uh, maybe some not so awful, but uh, human good can easily just be just as bad. We also know that everyone before getting saved have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Right? And they are all in unbelief. That's in Romans uh, 3.23. You don't have to look that up in Romans 11.32. But now I want to take a, a closer look at a particular sin uh, that my message is going to focus on, and that's going to be the verses that I skipped. So we're going to go to 26. It says, so For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. So, I'm, we're a little bit weightier subject here, but I'm talking about the homosexual community, right? Uh, they label themselves today as the LGBT community, right? Um, and just for, uh, just for a complete description, some of you might not know this, uh, it's actually a longer term. Uh, there's LGBT, sometimes you hear Q. Uh, there's also I and A after it, and then a plus. And I've seen other things that are a lot longer, uh, but just for kind of a clinical thing, uh, we all know what the L stands for, and I'm going to go through these kind of quick. Uh, L is lesbian, and then we have uh, G is gay, and then we have B is bisexual, T is transgender. Now, the Q can be one of two things. It can be queer, which is a general term encompassing everything. It also could be questioning gender. Um, there's the I, which is intersex, which is... It, that's not really a sin. That is, you're born with both reproductive systems, okay? But they're part of that community. You ha the A is asexual or allies. Uh, the asexual is not having any feelings of all or sexual desires. The allies would be someone who supports that uh, community or the social uh, justice in that. And then the plus would be everything else, okay? So just kind of giving you, I mean, they have some that I was, uh, researching that it was like a bunch of I's and some A's, and it's like, okay, that's way too much. This seemed to be the general long term. Most of the time, we just hear LGBT, sometimes the Q. Most of the time, they drop that off, but we never hear the other stuff. So I thought I, I would uh, give that to you as just information. So the reason why I bring this topic up, and I'm this kind of the way I am, I don't like to preach kind of the same uh, message, something a little bit different than what we hear is, is that really. For the longest time in my life, dealing with the homosexual community was very difficult for me. It's, uh, I always felt it really kind of viewed them pretty bad. Um, 
like it was a sin worse than any other sin. Very uncomfortable around them, you know, and to an extent, I still am. So uh, this is, message is really for me dealing with it, and I hope to share that with you. Um, but I have a, a, a buddy of mine that we do. We do Bible study every Wednesday morning uh, and up in Deer Valley at a Denny's. And I've shared that with some of you. And we've been doing it for two years. He's only been to church a couple of times. I thought he'd be here today, so I can still talk about him. But his name's David, and, um, and he gave me permission to kind of talk about this. But in the volleyball world, he's a volleyball ref, and he was very uncomfortable around me, very intimidated, because I'm at a higher rank than he is. So he would be very intimidated. He thought I was very pompous, which I probably, maybe I am, I don't know, full of myself, probably. You know, and if you, the more you get to know me, I am that kind of that way. Um, well, when my coaching end of it. So anyways, uh, but he wouldn't want to talk to me, you know, get any of, of my advice or anything like that. And so the fact that we're doing Bible study together is amazing. You know, we went one time to, I think we went to a Taco Bell. It was our first, just to see, test, because he needed help. And, uh, and so I offered to be his teacher. And so we, that first day, we basically fought with each other on scripture and he still stuck around and been doing it for two years now he finally this last Wednesday he started taking the lead and doing some teaching you know to me and we do a lot of like we'll do uh, pastor Richard Jordan in Chicago we do a lot of his videos and go over and we're doing some uh, other people's we just watch study their video dissect it out and do that but it was interesting to see what his view of me was and being able to still uh, come together and learn the word together. But, you know, I bring that part up because of what my view was toward the, the homosexual lifestyle. And uh, anyways, but so the question, the question remains for, for someone who's living in the homosexual lifestyle that sin is are they redeemable or not, right? So how are we going to view that? Uh, but let's look at whether they're redeemable or not, and we're going to look at the scripture to see. So let's go to Titus 2. We were just there at 2.11. Well, not that long ago anyways. Titus 2.11. Titus 2.11. says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, we know that, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that, ha that he might redeem us from all iniquity and, pur and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. So, He's redeeming us from all in iniquity, and that would include being gay, right? Uh, Colossians 2. Colossians 2, 13. It says, And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having given you all trespasses, Heaven, heaven, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out that, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it away, took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. So, forgiven you all trespasses, right? I was going to read another verse, but those two pretty much nail it right there. All, all trespasses, all iniquities. Uh, the other verse that I was going to talk about was Romans 5, 8 through 11, where it's like we were enemies, uh, we, were, uh, we were sinners. It's kind of a plural type of thing. It's not just one, so it's a little broader. Um, so you bet they're redeemable because uh, if they were not, then what, all wouldn't mean all, right? We've heard that, right? It's this, but I'll tell you this, it's a hard, it's, I always felt that, that, you know, maybe being gay, that's a weightier sin. I don't know, you know, like ranking the sins, you know, it's like, uh, I'm not going to do that. Um, but, you know, I decided to preach on this topic. Uh, uh, my wife and I uh, were invited to a gay wedding. In the volleyball world, there's a lot of officials that are gay. 
there's also players that are that way too. And I noticed that being a player coming in, uh, that, that a lot of people that were chant transgender or gay or lesbian and stuff like that. And so we were invited to a wedding and it wasn't, uh, the gentleman that, that invited us, it wasn't just, he's not just a casual uh, volleyball acquaintance. He, I, he's a friend, you know, in the volleyball world. And uh, so he was invited, we were invited, and that's why we weren't here last Sunday, is we spent our time in California uh, at the gay wedding. And uh, so you might be th maybe thinking of a few questions. I certainly had some myself. Uh, so why did I even consider going? Well, he was a friend. And uh, uh, my wife said, we're going, you know, so. Um, but I'll tell you what, I was trying everything to figure out how can I squirm out of this? You know, it's, I don't want to go. Just don't, you know. It's like I'd rather be here. I'd rather, one, giving up making money on a Saturday or something like that, you know, and having to spend money. You know, that's me there. I won't wait, wait in that. Um, uh, was I uncomfortable? Yeah, you bet. You know, I'm actually, I'm uncomfortable preaching about this, you know, how you're going to receive it, but uh, that's the way it goes. Uh, but I made a choice to see what happens, you know. Uh, did I think going, here's the big one, did I think going would give, be giving my approval to the wedding, you know, and uh, I, I, it kept waiting on me. It's like, okay, what kind of shows do I watch, you know? You remember when Friends first came out, television show? Well, the big thing on that was is there was a lesbian couple on it, you know, and so the Christian community was going all up in an uproar that, okay, did we watch that? There was a lot of boycotts of the show. Like, I don't know if you remember that or not. So then you have, what's the big ones today? It's Modern Family, right? So we have a, a gay couple that are on there, you know, and it's a funny show, but you still have that element. It's almost hard to watch a show nowadays without that element coming in. Uh, and, and I know, and I'm not going to name names, but it's like Game of Thrones. That's a good show. I've got four episodes into it, and that's about as far as I can go. I liked it, but that element's in there pretty big, too, amongst other things. So it's like, are we giving our approval when we watch those shows? Yeah, probably, you know, but it's more of a remote thing. You know, whereas here, I'm actually spending money and time making a sacrifice to be away from you to go and be in this wedding. You know, so it's like, you bet, I felt like I was giving my approval. Um, anyways, but there were verses that Paul talks about that kept coming into my mind, too. And we'll get more onto that later. It's toward the end of my message. Uh, that told me go. So that's what I did. You know, plus my wife says we weren't, we weren't going to not go. So that's what we did. Um, but I'll tell you, when, when, our, when our friend saw us, uh, he basically hugged us and cried that we made the trip, the effort to come. And him being a volleyball person, he lives in Northern California, he, and he's gay. But for some reason, he's blacklisted as a ref, so he gets very few matches over there. So he comes all the way to Arizona to ref. And so my wife and I worked with him to get him uh, higher up in ranking. So there's a, an attachment there, an approval, and acceptance, and type of thing. And so he cried when we were there. He hugged us and thanked us, and uh, it was quite emotional. So, and I think what, what, uh, what was a bigger impact for him is, is in the volleyball community, there were probably eight of us that were there that, that, that were from the volleyball world. And six of us were from Arizona and two were from Canada. I don't know of any other volleyball people that were there from Northern Cal or anything like that. So... Uh, but my wife and I, we, you know, we used, we used this as a mini vacation is what we decided to do. And we went to, we tried to get tickets at a concert. You know, they sold out in 20 seconds. So, we, I, so I had the bright idea. I was like, well, why don't we do the, the, this Korean, Korean music? My wife's into that, and she got me into that. She got Lacey into that. And um, uh, so we went to go see the concert. We couldn't get the tickets, so we said, well, I had a great idea. Let's do the convention before. Because we have been to, like, have you heard of Comic-Con? Uh, they have like Politicon, there's all these different things. Well, they have Korean Con. And so we did the convention. And uh, uh, the convention was a bust to me. I thought it was pointless, you know. Um, my wife got a couple little little things out of it. She thought it was fun. But uh, the big thing was is we got to eat the food afterwards. But that was outside. I didn't even have to pay to go to the convention. We could have just went and ate the food. That was phenomenal. You know, and then I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm getting my food and then someone snaps a picture 
you know, and I think, oh yeah, that's because I'm the only old white guy here at this convent, you know, convention eating food. That's why they took a picture. So, but you know, we used that as a trip. We were going to stay at a hotel in LA, and we had another volleyball friend uh, that was there, and she said, "No, cancel your hotel reservations." I'm like, "Yeah, that's saving some money there. It's not cheap." And uh, uh, so we stayed with her, and oh, actually, I, we were going to spend time with her anyways. But she she opened up her house for us, and um, and this is something my wife and I think about all the time when we're refing and why we ref together. Uh, I don't do a lot of college refing. Uh, because that takes me away from my, my wife. So we do whatever we can together, uh, refing wise because we landscape together and we, we ref together. So pulling us apart, we don't like to do that. And uh, this lady, she's a little bit older than us, uh, you know, maybe 10 years, and um, she lost her husband while she was away. So she, here she is on another side of the country, refing. Her husband's at home, loses her husband, and she comes home, he's not there. Just gone. And uh, this just happened in July, I think it was. So it was pretty recent. And uh, so that was pretty difficult, you know. And it's like, I want to share the gospel to her. You know, we have an open an opportunity to do that. And I felt, I don't know if it was right or wrong, but it felt like, no. You know, there'll be another time to do that. Because I don't know if they're saved or not. I don't know what their beliefs are. You know, and if, if he was unsaved and then I go and hit them with the gospel, I think that would have been really wrong. So I made the, the decision not to at that time. Maybe later on when it's not so fresh that we would. And we'll definitely go and see her some more. But we, we just took that opportunity there. The next morning we got up and we went to, we drove, we drove the whole way. We drove from uh, L.A. to San Francisco on high, Highway 5. Anybody been on Highway 5? Oh, my gosh. That is bad. 90 miles an hour, and you're just keeping up with them. And what's so bad is they tailgate so bad that, and you have all your semis on this side, you know, on the right side, and you got everybody going 90, and it's this fast, slow, fast, slow, because they get, they, people try to pass on the right side, and then they just push in. And then what happens? Everybody slams on the brake, and then they all slow down, you know, and so it's that. It's just super crazy. So I figured out the system was you stay on the right as long as possible, you wait till they break. And then you just kind of coast in, and then you coast back. You just do that the whole way. Oh, my gosh. So we spent our time on this trip, my wife and I, talking a lot. You know, we listened to music uh, over and over and over. We had a playlist. We did that, like, four times to get home and uh, complaining about the, the driving. So that was our uh, event there. So anyways, uh, but I, how, many, how many people, you can raise, actually, I would like you if you raise your hands on this. How many have been to a gay wedding? Anybody? Okay, so I'm assuming you have friends. Okay, that's different. I'm in the landscape business. You bet I've, I've, I've uh, done landscaping for people who have been gay, and obviously I ref, so there's that as well. But uh, does anybody have friends that are gay or relatives? Anybody? Yeah, you, we, so that's a lot. You know, I would say that was almost 75% in there. So... Um, so you've been to a gay wedding, no one else has. So I thought I would share just some of my points. I, I started, uh, when the wedding started taking place, I started typing notes on my phone. And then my, way, my wife gave me a huge elbow, you guys, right? You guys have all had that. And she, she said, that's inappropriate. And I go, yeah, you're right. And it's like, I should have. Oh, you got elbowed? No. Really? Huh. That's different than what uh, my experience was. And, and so David's here saying that, that uh, the minister prayed. Um, in, in mine, uh, uh, it was, they weren't called a minister or a preacher. It was master of ceremonies. I thought that was appropriate. Uh, it, this is not a, a God-ordained wedding. It's a state-ordained wedding is the difference. Um, but there were, there were probably two, two to three hundred people there. So of that, only eight of us were volleyball, you know. And, and the two from Canada, I honestly I couldn't tell whether they were uh, transgender or, or ladies. I, I don't know, you know. But uh, the others that were with us... Um, 
the six that were from Arizona, uh, one was a lesbian, and uh, the other two were Catholic, and I got to share a lot with them. That was their first time being at a gay wedding. So it was good to have that communication. Uh, she got to learn a lot about me and why I was there and vice versa. Very classy wedding, very classy, very expensive. Uh, this is in San Francisco, and uh, we stayed at a hotel a lot further away, you know, to try to find something a little cheaper. And, you know, and I, I, in the refing world, we stay at a lot of luxury uh, hotels. Uh, they get comp to us. We don't have to pay for them. And so I'm kind of used to luxury hotels, but not to that level. I mean, that was like way above. And so we had ballet parking, and I was like, okay, we'll do it for, for, the, for that. And uh, I'm used to ballet parking, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks? Does that sound about right? $62 for valet parking. And so my, my, I asked my wife, I go, do we tip them on the way out? And she goes, no, $62? And I'm like, that's my girl. You know, so. But uh, I found it interesting that the master of ceremonies, uh, right out the gate, addressed uh, if there was any, that, that there were probably some here that it, this is their first time at a gay wedding. I don't know what he said after that, but he addressed that. So I thought that that was good. You know, I don't know. Um, they mentioned a verse without saying the verse. 1 Corinthians 13.4. You can go to it if you want. You, everybody knows this one. They, you didn't use the King James Version. Of course not. Uh, they, which is the love is what? Kind, so forth, so forth, so forth. So they used that verse. I don't know if they got it from the Bible or... My guess is they got it more out of a poem. Uh, this ceremony w was filled with poems. Uh, it was filled with um, stories about how they met, stuff like that. Uh, they never mentioned God at all. Uh, they did mention more like a, of a, uh, a universe type of deal. Uh, and I don't know if that's just kind of like, sub it was probably a substitute for God type of deal. Uh, the most important thing that they brought up that, that I thought kind of stood out is they have this common bond of when they were kids. When they knew they were gay and they were kids, they always wondered whether they would have a special day of a wedding as a kid growing up. They would see everybody get married, and they were, would wonder, would we ever be able to get married this, under the same type of situation? So that's a big... Uh, pull or tug at their heart. So, anyways, I thought I would share um, that with you. Um, and my point, you know, one is just to share that to you, but it's, it's what should be our attitude toward them and toward the LGBT community, the homosexuals. Um, we first have to realize what are they looking for as people or as human beings? They're looking for acceptance, approval. Uh, friendship and love. They mention love and friendship. They mention all of this stuff uh, in their wedding many times. But I'm not talking about accepting their sin, right? But what, they, what they're longing for, what people are longing for. And in, in Ephesians 1.6, how much better would it be if they were accepted, not from person to person, but in the beloved, right? How much better would that be? What should our, be our goal? Um, our goal to this community. Um, we should, well, one, we should be viewing them as, as what? Human beings, right? Whose sin happens to be gay in this, in this instance. Two gentlemen that are getting married. Uh, it's just a sin to God, and right? And he gave, he gave them up to that sin if that's what they choose to do, right? Um, so let's look at Paul for a couple examples of what maybe should be our goal. You guys probably already know what that is. Romans 11. I have two verses here. Romans 11, 14. This one's really quick. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh. This is Paul talking. Uh, his flesh is the Jews, and he might save some of them. So Paul is looking. The ministry... Um, Things are changing, and Paul is looking to save some of the Jews. He's not looking to save them all. He just, if he can just get one, that would be great. Uh, 1 Corinthians, I'm sure the more the better. 1 Corinthians 9, 
1 Corinthians 9, 19. This is our final verse. 1 Corinthians 9, 19. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain some that are under the law. To them that are without the law, as without the law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without the law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. So clearly our goal should be to try to save everyone we meet, right? Uh, looking past their specific sin, seeing the unsaved soul. And uh, honestly, it's like I love my wife, the person. I don't like the sin of her manipulating me, right? But I love my wife. So with all that said, maybe I use verses today wrong, out of context. I don't know. I'll let you be right. I'll be wrong. I'm good with that. Um, but until I see otherwise, my goal will be to save some. Okay? With that, let's pray. Father, I pray we learn to go to the Word for answers in our daily life struggles and trust it in its ability to work in us. We thank, we thank you that everyone is redeemable and can be saved for your glory. Amen. All right. With that, dismissed. Thank you. No. Okay. I don't know if I have answers. Uh, QuickBook Pro. Yeah, sorry, I thought I was in my my teaching hat, and you wanted me to switch to financial hat. Valet parking. Yeah, just so someone could take it from the front of the, uh, to the back. Yeah.